welcome to the check-in podcast brought to you by Luxemore Studio. My name's Megan, owner and founder of Luxemore. And my name's Amy, studio therapist and best friend. A place to check in on all things Luxemore, business ideas, tips and tricks, how we operate, girls chats and everything in between. On today's episode, we will be talking about our gorgeous founder and how she came about to getting Luxemore Studio. So, Firstly, I think, just tell us about your journey where it began. Okay, so, so I will say, we'll discuss in a, in a next episode on how we met, which will be the first kind of stage yeah. of the journey, but just a brief overview is from, straight from school, GCSEs, went to college. I think for me, actually, it was like, when I was in college, I had, I was contemplating whether I should do A-levels and then go into go into like the beauty wellness industry okay um I think my older sister went straight to university my mum went to university my dad didn't he and he owns a business and I always thought do I need to get those I don't know a like a levels go to university um and then do and um I decided to go and do makeup artistry And then I did a beauty course. And then for me, it really started when I did my complementary therapy course, which is um, massage, aromatherapy, and reflexology. And I studied that in Bath, um, straight on to a level three course, because I already had qualifications. And so what made you go for the complementary therapies over the general therapy? Okay, so, um, (laughs) well, I guess we did beauty together. And I always liked the facials and I wanted to do the massage. We didn't do any massage in level two. Yeah. And for me, and obviously I did the makeup, but for me, I kind of like the more free flowing side of the massage. It yeah. just, it pulled me in really. And I found, once I started, I found it so interesting, the different, like the aromatherapy with their essential oils and the benefits of like reflexology and... And massage I just loved anyway. Mm. And I think growing up, I would always do, like, my mum and dad's shoulders whilst they sat on the floor. Um, and they would, mum would always say, oh, you have such magic hands. But I think that's the mum thing to say. And um, so I started with that. And then we did some tours for college. And my first spa I went to was... Well, actually, when I did the tour first, I went to the Royal Crescent. And they hadn't had a refurbishment. And I didn't have anywhere to sit, and it was a bit outdated. Mm. Um, by the time I had finished college, it had had a big refurbishment, and I thought it looked lovely. And that, for me, is something I always wanted to ha- be somewhere that I was, like, happy to work and, like, happy to promote and felt, like, good about the space. Yeah. Um, and I started there... Oh, I don't know when I started. Maybe 2018? I definitely know, though. I, know I feel I, like 2018 sounds about right. Yeah, I definitely st- I started on my grand's birthday. No, was it not sooner than that? I started on 15th of August. I have that somewhere, but... Um, it was definitely sooner than 2018, because I visited in... No, I started... Oh, 2016. Yeah. 15th of August. Bloody hell. Yeah. 15th of August, 2016. I guess, actually, going back to that... Going back on my past jobs, my first salon I worked in was in 2015, 10th of October, and that was like a part-time alongside Waitrose. Mm. And actually, I think you massaged her not long ago, the lady who owned it, and she was having a prenatal massage, so that was a nice moment. But yeah, I went to the Royal Chasm, and I loved it straight away, pretty much. Actually, I say that. No, I didn't. No, I can't can't think what job that is. Oh, no, I did love it straight away. I just got along so well with the girls there. Mm. And, like, I still see them now. And, obviously, that's 2016, so, like, a long amount of time. And just friends that I have made for life for there and that I would call now at any time and we would just get along. Yeah. And I loved it. And I massaged all types of people. Um, Yeah. It and it a, was a nice environment. Yeah, I was going to say, I visited whilst you were there, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It was completely it was, stunning. Yeah. Uh, but it was nice. It was quite, I would say, small and yeah. intimate, but More not, of a boutique yeah. spa, 
And you'd have the range of like the members, the regular hotel guests who maybe came every month and then just new hotel guests and spa days like you were. Yeah. Um, and I loved that environment. And that was like, I'd work every Saturday though and some Sundays. I even worked Christmas Day one year. So it wasn't like, well, it's, it's, it's like the hospitality industry in mm. some ways, whereas like it's seven days mm. a week. Yeah, we didn't, hours, yeah, and yeah, you're always kind of on, on demand, so to say. Yeah, but I loved it there, and I was there a few years, um, and I could have happily stayed there. But you know, when people start leaving and doing new things, and when I met up with them just before Christmas, like everybody does something different now. No one is still working there. Yeah, um, and a lot changes. But I then got a. Um, like a man managerial position in a spa. Mm. Um, I actually went just as a normal therapist, and this guy had just brought over, like he had just bought the spa, um, not the spa, bought the hotel, and he was renovating everything, and they wanted me to kind of be like a a bit of a spa project manager to give in different insights, but we were also paired with number fifteen in Bath so we would work together with that spa manager and and that was lovely but when I started that being with such a close-knitted team before we got on so well I would lich I remember crying in toilets (laughs) I know I remember crying in the toilets like the first week or the first couple weeks I loved the person I worked with Tess who actually when I opened this place came and worked here for a bit um we're born on the same day we're both Capricorns and we get along so well but um and we did start at the same time but when I think going up to more of a manager position and it being so run down the spa needing so much work like I was really sold to the dream of this new spa that had be coming soon and mm. it's still not built and that's a, quite a few years ago and now. And I remember the promises. I remember you telling us yeah. about it and how it was going to be amazing. All of this. And, and I loved that I went in just for a normal spa, uh, like therapist position and then they gave me a much higher position. Like mm. I liked that they could see something in me. Yeah. But that, that did turn me down. And there was points where I was at such a... Low, well not a low but like ready to leave and um but I did enjoy it it just wasn't what I was used to with the luxury mm. the luxury feel of it and when you're building a hotel from a certain I don't know like trying to bring a hotel up from a certain low point and just all the people you get in but I wasn't used to the type of people that would just try and get anything for them. I remember there was this couple and um, they were so funny. They thought all the massages were really overpriced. It'd be like £110 for a massage um, in a spa. Mm. And they would try and like go to reception and be like, oh no, she said it would be this price. And then I would turn off and they'd be like, and they would just be cheeky. They would just try and push their luck really. Yeah. And it's just interesting. The type of... um, The type of clients you attract as you're growing a business are not always the ideal clients Mm -hmm. at the end. But I did love it there. But for me, um, I left, I left, um, what year was the pandemic? 2020. 2020, March 2020. Yeah. So I left, I want to say, I, no, so during that time I had started looking at shops and I was looking at a shop in Norton Radstock I think I remember that. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god! And I was literally this land landlady was this uh, really old landlady, she, older lady, and um, <laughs> she came and also with the estate agents opposite. And I said I worked in a spa, and she thought I meant like a spa, as in like the red, oh my, like gosh. convenience store. And she was like, and I was like, no, I run a spa, and she and She's she just getting wasn't it. getting it. And to be honest, that would never have been the space for me. But then since then, I also looked at a space in Brislington and I remember like wanting to put an offer in or I phoned to put an offer in and someone had just like agreed a deal like less than an hour before. Yeah. But I think everything happens for a reason because like my dad said to me, you know, you would have been flogging a dead horse in the pandemic if I had Mm -hmm. opened it. 
but instead I had a family friend contact that was looking for people and my mum sent me it and I met up with her and that is how I started working in Hannam mm. and I rented a room but obviously my background I was in a spa so I didn't have any regular clients before all of this I had tried doing mobile but got nowhere with mobile and I um started renting a room and then I was that was in the December 19 mm. 2019 and then obviously a few months in COVID happened um, I did leave my job at Homeward and then managed to get an office job. Um, so I was doing three days there and then I was doing three days at the salon. And I started there, but obviously COVID happened. I still had my office job, which was really lucky. I then set up another business a few months into COVID that was online doing like e-commerce products. Um, and then I went back to back to this um the salon at the time just doing treatments mm. and I think I really gave my room a bit of a refurbishment yeah because when I went in I literally just had a bed and this just like a I don't know like a cupboardy type thing from B&M it looked awful and then I really refurbished it like thought about how it looked and I felt then business started coming a bit more word of mouth started coming and obviously yeah. we were all in and out of lockdown for a couple years but it was such a nice space you created a really nice and it was like a nice big room yeah um and it was the best starting block that I could have ever had because they helped grow Mm. me so much and I will always say that that was the best way of ever like the best decision I made to get to this point because there was so much help and guidance and I loved the people I worked with it was such a nice atmosphere um and I loved going in there but I found this place what 20 September 2021 so I'd only really been there for two years but I was working in the salon um in the office job and then doing the online business as well so juggling the three for quite a while and then I always said I would never be in the salon full-time just from a money standpoint I was paying a percentage, so it didn't make much sense for me to be there full time yeah. and not just do it for myself. Um, and that's always been the goal for me. Like when I was in college, the business plan, I actually got a, uh, so I got a business loan for part of the money to open this place. And the the business plan I sent that was the one I made in college when I was 18. That's crazy. Um, with a few tweaks, but yeah. That is actually so crazy because I would have just been talking so much rubbish. But you have always, like, I've from always when I met you, you've to. always wanted yeah. your own thing. 100%. And I don't think that there was any, like, doubt that you wouldn't get there. No. Like, it was and just, I think, it was the yeah. way that your life was going to go. And that's that. Yeah. And I've always, I've always, I knew, like, I, I don't have any doubt that I would ever get to this stage because I do back what I do. But there's definitely been points where I've been, like, I might have not been in the right... Like, I would never have been in the right circumstance mm. in in Radstock or in Brislington. And exactly that, though. Like you said, everything happens for a reason. Massively. And, and like, my dad said to me at the time, like, he didn't think I had it in me at the time to... To, mm. to do it and I don't and not in a bad not in a bad way I just think he meant in that space and the time of my life mm. I was so I must have been like 21 mm. like it's like it's doable but it's so it is so young but mm. you can do any I I don't want to say you're so young that you can't do things but you can of course do it but the magnitude of taking on a space is there's a lot to pay for Mm. um, and there's a lot to do and to be in the right mindset to do it and to have the right people around you to to support you Mm. and I think that's a big thing like who is around you Um, obviously you know (laughs) Antoine since I've met Antoine I've had so much progression in my career and I do think it's a big thing of who is around you and who's pushing you I know I would always have got to this space regardless but he's definitely been a force yeah pushed like definitely has got me there 
um, quicker, like he's not listening. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and on my family, like, so supportive. Mm. And I think my drive does come a lot from my parents because my dad is a business, but my mum's as much a part of it as well, and they work together. And I think he's never wanted me to have my own business because of the the stress that mm. he's gone through and how it's hard and there's some awful times. There's also some great times, but I think he's just a protector and has never wanted me to get, to have to deal with all those things. Yeah. Um, but in turn, like you said, his business and the work that he's put into that is definitely yeah. rubbed off. Yeah, and rubbed off and given me the best upbringing yeah. that I could have possibly had. And I hope, that I can obviously do the same in the future um but yeah I guess that's where the drive had started but um yeah and then we opened this place yeah in 2020 January well I got the keys 14th of January 2022 we took about six weeks to refurbish it um it was really quite run down in here before but not nothing that needed to be done like massive cos- structural work and mm. um, we did knock down the walls I was really lucky with the people I used they were like family friends um the main guy who did it worked for my dad and he came in on here like came in here on the weekends and I just paid him for like days work and whatnot mm. but yeah it was real and obviously Amy came in she helped <laughs> paint so did my partner um but yeah, it was really a joint joint effort to get it over the line. Yeah. And then yeah, I started on my own, but then since had two employees, mm. one still standing. <laughs> <laughs> and now another one just hired today, hopefully. <laughs> and then two more resident therapists and hopefully we just have a lot more to come, like workshops and not like do nice yoga workshops on Sundays and just meditation and things like that and mm. expand our knowledge and treatment and I think as well like with that doing more of the content like creating mm. podcasts doing a bit with YouTube just really pushing our marketing in those like fields as well and just really getting us out there mm. like it's our first year but just for Christmas we won an awards I know crazy um best massage studio in the southwest which is it's a huge it's a huge deal really yeah because it's against all spas as well and that was my background is like spas yeah no way against all spas in the southwest which is like how many like crazy it's all cool isn't it oh my gosh so and we got nominated for that don't know who that was from but thank you (laughs) um so yeah that was a huge To do win that in our first year is a huge achievement. Mm. But obviously that is down to Amy as well. And just the whole like the whole atmosphere atmosphere that we've created here. Yeah. And just the ethos that we have and how present we are in our treatments and yeah, so much has gone into it Mm. that they took into account or at least said on the phone is like doing their research of what people say about us Mm. and our online presence and how we act towards people and how we like bring people in with Mm. what we put out so I'm most pleased about that yeah yeah well you've done amazingly well from start to where we are currently and I know it's just going to continue yeah definitely just the beginning yeah absolutely but I know we'll see where we go but it's definitely been and we can go more into if people want to know we can go more into details of yeah how we've grown and got to this point or even maybe like the background on like the financials on how to Mm -hmm. to get to this point I know a lot to it really yeah yeah there's so much behind like actually finding a space like the solicitors and dealing with the management agency and so many different things that we can speak about if someone's interested yeah and obviously being quite a young age of just well 25 when I got the keys and how much there is to learn I wouldn't say I was su- I wouldn't say I was sh- surprised and shocked by anything that came mm. but 
But then I expected there to be so much. So I didn't know if I just managed my expectation a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I think it'll be interesting to speak about because I would have loved to know. I think when I started, I tried to look for, or we both did, tried to look for YouTube videos and like people talking about the experience of opening a space. Yeah. But not nothing being there. Yeah. I think we found like one good channel from the States and she's a hairdresser. And although it's like within the industry of like hair and beauty is such a different industry than what we do. Yeah. I think we give, it's personal as well what they do, but we are that exchange of energy, like touch on touch. Mm. It's so, it's an intimate experience as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I want people to see more, like shed more light on it. I mm. think as the years go by since lockdown, especially people take self-care more, seriously yeah more invested in themselves and just looking after ourselves and I think that's really our ethos here yeah is to just take care of each other and just the wellness and just pushing that out to people and like so much like muscle health skin health like the reflexology like we had a obviously a crazy one this year that I always speak about but one of our um clients fell pregnant after so many years like not being able to conceive and then we did a reflexology session um and she mentioned it so we did a second one by her ovulation Mm -hmm. and she fell pregnant and she's been trying for so long and that was such like a nice moment to think no this actually what we actually do is so beneficial yeah and reflexology is such an incredible treatment and I had that in college I was working with a lady that had never had children and now she's had three and I just think it's so, like, it's such a nice, it's obviously everybody is different. So I can't say everyone will fall pregnant. Yeah. But it's such a nice treatment, such a grounding treatment with such big benefits. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I love, like, what we do here. And help people through these. Yeah. 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 And, and even if not stuff like that, just a nice, safe space to come into and just yeah. completely relax. I feel like the setup, obviously we can go into this more another time, yeah. but the setup, the the actual studio itself yeah, is so incredible. And it is the first thing that people mention, how beautiful it is and how yeah. as, as much as we're in Bristol, uh, in Kingswood, at the yeah. end of a really busy high street, yeah. it just feels like such a... An escape. A, yeah. Yeah. And it is, and it's been such a factor on how the place has been laid out to get that safe space. That's what I want to be. And I think a lot of clients that we have have been through, like, traumatic experiences where they're learning that safe space again and they're Mm. learning that soft touch and how touch can be a safe, Mm. it's like a safe place. Um, Yeah. And I do, th- and I think we have created that. And I think it shows in what people say about us and the feedback that we get and also how we feel. Yeah. Like I've I've definitely wept in places before where you feel anxiety to, to go in somewhere and mm. or to return back to work or anything like that. And you kind of get that build up before. Yeah. And I think we've both, because I, I remember we spoke before about us. I, I remember like, Or, like, the anxiety of, like, Mm. wanting to... You're, like, heaving. Stopping yourself from throwing up before you go somewhere. Yeah. And I think... Yeah. And I think for some clients, I was speaking to one recently who came here for the first time, super nervous about coming in. And it's, like, the moment she stepped through the door, she said she just relaxed. And I think that's the main... Yeah. Because going somewhere unknown, it is scary, knowing what people are like. And I think we do a good, we get a good picture across of what we do and how we are. Mm-hmm. Um, that From we, the minute you walk through the door. Yeah. yeah. And even beyond, like, on our, like, social media presence yeah. to try and show, to show, try and show what we create. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I hope we can, we can do that. But I just, yeah, I think for me, the podcast is just talking about more business stuff that we can, that other people can relate to, any tips that we have um, to put across and just like our experiences and 
But and we're up to and yeah. what we're doing and how we're moving forward. Yeah, and, exactly. Because yeah. that's, I think for us, like, definitely we have, like, we don't have a huge following at the moment, but it's such an interactive following, like, they always respond to what we do. They're mm. always messaging us and contacting us. And yeah. they're just very, they just mesh with us. I think they're just our type of people, really. Yeah. Um. So I'm happy that's something that we've created. And obviously we're only a year in, so we'll have many more years to come, hopefully. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. And just to get this space across, like uh, a... a I obviously call this a wellness studio, but some people call it a salon. But to have a salon that doesn't do, like, waxing and nails Mm. and spray tans, and we just solely specialise in massage facials and reflexology. Yeah. It's really rare. I think I know of maybe one or two places in Bristol that just do massage. Yeah. um, That I would, yeah... (laughs) <laughs> that are that are like good recommendable places that I would recommend to someone and yeah. not like mm-hmm. some of the other massage places that are around. Um but yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. I think at one point I probably didn't think that I could open something that just did. And I still get comments of people like, Oh, don't you do like nails or yeah, can I work I, a pedicure? When I tell people where I work and I say, Oh, it's a massage studio facial yeah. and reflex. And they're like, oh, okay, but, yeah, do you, what, else, what else yeah. is there? What else do you do? And I'm like, no, no, it's just, we just yeah. focus on those three main things. Or at least between, yeah. yeah Us too, do. yeah. Um, and, yeah, even with the resident therapists, they all do treatments that income, in, well, embody what we, what we do, mm. but are different. And I think the thing is for any therapist that I know who are beauty therapists I wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't class myself as a beauty therapist as such but they normally hate doing massage Mm. um like with people I've worked for they would rather never do a massage and just do like the nails because that's what their niche is whereas our niche is massage and facials and and reflexology and I think that's why we're good at it because I personally love doing it and I always have and that's where my passion is. I wouldn't want to, I don't know, I wouldn't want to bring in something that doesn't embody what we do. Mm. But then nice. my, like, my idea of this place has changed so much over time because when I looked at that place in Norton Radstock, I remember, like, planning out in my head, oh, this is where the pedicure stands will go because wow. I thought I had to it's do kind that. of just the way to go isn't it yeah if you're opening up a like you said salon or studio whatever yeah. you like to call it you kind of don't you don't you tend to go into points. yeah you don't tend yeah. to just focus on one area and I think it is something that is um yeah groundbreaking yeah it's it's and it's, it's just different I think just something that you could go to a massage probably in any salon but will it be the same standard as what we do I don't I don't think so. I think yeah. what we do, or oh, I personally have a lot of treatments that I, mm. but I always think they're learning because in each one I'm learning something different and I take little bits away from each one and mm. things I do and don't like. And and yeah, I think we give incredible treatments. Yeah. And yeah, I, and we will continue to. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, I just think, yeah well I keep thinking about like before I think we but I can't think if it was before we did makeup artist tube and I did went for a beauty course and the lady said to me you're too bubbly to be uh like how could you be serious when you whack someone and I thought that's so crazy because I was, would have been 16 oh my gosh yeah but I think it goes back to like the people that are around you and like support you mm. or even for example when I see you I say, Amy, I'm going to start YouTube. Okay. <laughs> like, you just don't say any, like, you don't say, I know I could tell other maybe friends mm. and they're not as open-minded mm. and they would be like, why? Why are you going to do that? Yeah. And it's not because I want to be a YouTuber or no. like a podcaster. It is purely to base, um, 
purely to build more of a brand for Luxmore Studio and the advertising behind it. And I just think, yeah, the people who are around you just, they either kind of lift you up or they could bring you down and Mm. it's so important. And that's why I love having you here as well because I think that's what what Mm. you do, really. I could say a lot of things to you and it won't phase phase you Mm. in any way. And the same if I said it to my sister. She'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Mm. (laughs) You know, there's nothing that's like, I don't know, are you used to work with this lady and she would like make fun of people that um post on Instagram and like on stories and I think it does rub off like who you're around because then you're thinking oh I should like yeah that person thinks it's embarrassing I shouldn't do that that's so crazy to me because I'm honestly in awe of everything that you do the way that you no seriously (laughs) the way that you have the confidence to go onto Instagram and and speak and do these stories and I I think it's amazing and you really are pushing your brand in the best way and I think that people can see that and I don't look at you and cringe in any way yeah anything you do because I just think it's yeah you're doing so amazingly well with it you're pushing your brand and yeah. there's not a lot of people doing it like you do like I'm proud and, to yeah. work here because you really take hold of everything that you oh, like <laughs> you just yeah you just go for it and I love it and it is inspirational like yeah. I see you and you you know sometimes when I first started and I used to feel a bit nervous because obviously I hadn't done that year course and we'll touch yeah. more onto that later but um I hadn't done that year course and I did a smaller a shorter course and yeah. so coming in I was really nervous um and just the way that you were like, no, you're going to be amazing. Like, you had no yeah. no doubt or question in me. You were just like, this is going to be great. You're going to be great. And that yeah. really made me feel so like, yeah, this is cool. Like, I'm yeah. here. And then the way you speak to people about me, like, you're just very, you just, you know what you want. You go out and get it <laughs> and you push it in yeah. the best way. And yeah. it's encouraging and it's nice to see. And I think that's what's going to be good about this YouTube and the podcast. And it's going to be beneficial to you, but beneficial also to a lot of other people who are trying to yeah. go through a similar journey to you. And yeah. like you said, you've looked yourself and there's nothing out there. And I feel like this is it. You're doing it. And yeah. that's amazing. No. And I'm glad because I said a few months ago, oh, Amy, we're going to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> what are we going to talk about? <laughs> And then yeah. we've, and we've, yeah, and this will be our first episode and we've, we've done it. And I think that is something about me. I will always do what I'm going to say I'm going to do yeah. or at least try it. Yeah. And, um, and see what I, and see, see how it goes. Yeah. And I just think, why not? Yeah. You know. You're doing it. I just, and that's what I think sometimes when I post a video. I mean, yeah. I don't listen to them back. But I just think, no, why not? But you sound great and you look great. Yeah, but so I put on my I put on my um my little Instagram voice. But even things like that, I think sometimes people make you feel self conscious about. Even my mum does that though. She'll be like, oh, you put on your American voice. It's different when it's your mum, obviously, because yeah. you know you give and you take. My <laughs> like, when my family know that I'm doing this, and if they do listen, yeah, they will be like. Hmm, I hear you got your telephone voice out for that one. Like, I know what yeah. you're saying. But, but there's the difference, isn't it? Of someone yeah. who makes you feel small and then also just your family who give you stick, I think. Yeah, exactly. You know? But yeah. I think this is going to be amazing. Um, I know. I'm was, quite enjoying the talking. Yeah, it was great to get to know you in the first <laughs> podcast, like I don't already. <laughs> but for oh. everyone else out there, I think it was a, yeah... A little a really nice intro eye opener to of our, what we do. Yeah, and to our founder. My name's Megan. And my name's Amy. Until next time, we're, we're checking, checking out. out.